Chapter 4 The bell rang and the history teacher left the class. I started packing my book inside my bag with one thought in mind. Library. Yeah, that was where I hide my face. Away from those eyes that never seemed to stop staring at me. Especially when I had my hood on to hide myself. To never be prey to some people. To some angry teenagers who love to take out their anger on other people. Some other innocent people. I got bullied in my junior year and it was hell for me. It was easy prey in the hands of both males and females. It was either they beat me up or sent me errands, especially the female ones. They spoiled many less ones, but they knew better than to tell it to their faces, pretty faces, if I may add. Junior high school was hell, but home was heaven. I was happy. I was loved with Mr. Johnson as scary, loving and sweet. Everything was okay, but it was then before I knew I was adopted. In my first year in high school, the bullying stopped. I didn't know why, but I was glad and that didn't stop me from wearing a hoodie nevertheless. Or was it because I became a senior? No, I didn't think so. Seniors bully each other too. School for me was getting okay. I had Bisola and Tayan, the only two friends I talked to. And now, home was becoming sour, becoming bitter. When I was about to stand up and find my way to the library, I felt cold water powered in my body, right from the top of my head. I was shocked. My mouth was agape. I turned and met Minka staring and grinning at me with a look of satisfaction. What is happening? I thought bullying me was over. I was in my final year for God's sake. This stuff needed to stop. I had a break from getting bullied some months ago, almost a year, and I must admit I had peace. Just why now? Did my love get any worse? Hey girl, long time, Yinka said and walked away in my short uniform. I knew people were looking. I did not have to take a look back. I could feel their eyes making holes at the back of my head. This was too much. Yinka was a spoiled brat, one of the rich spoiled brats I had in my school. Very expensive sneakers, pieces of jewelry, very cold wristwatch to show off how well she was. I swallowed hard and quickly rushed out to the classroom with my backpack with me. I walked down with my backpack with me and go to the hallway as normal as I could but at the same time increase my pace. Since we were there, doing one thing or other. Some were going through their lockers, we were gossiping and whispering God knows what into each other's ears and giggling. God, it could be about boys. He yelled to Sin, one guy called. He was a bully but never be bullied me before. Well, maybe not yet. I had seen him treat other students before. I knew there was worse than mine. I hugged my backpack tightly, had my hood on, took over with wet hair, bowed and hung a reply. Look up, he ordered. His name was Shun. All of us Shun was the full name, meaning thank you, Dad. I politely obeyed and met his green face. He gulped down the last drink and threw the empty soda can at my face, which hurt. I blinked my eyes as tears from the rain down on my cheeks. It was as silent as I wanted it to be, and I just kept swallowing lumps down my throat. Oh, come see her face. She is crying. Shun pointed a finger at my face and had a fake crying face just to mock me. His laughter got other students in the hallway to laugh. This was torture. Hey, throw this dirt away in the bin, okay? The Malala said to me, thrusting a tissue paper into my hand. One used to wipe her makeover and I guess saliva too because I was feeling something wet. I looked at her face but couldn't do anything. What exactly I was going to do? The Malala winked and walked past with a dress can that was at the corner. All about the Malala was her full name, meaning God has enriched me. One of the richest girls 
in Heritage High School from a wealthy home with a career as a new model. You know what, Trin? You mess with her again. You're messing with me, a voice said behind me. I knew the voice. It was twins. Hey, calm down, okay? Jin had his hands up in the air as he was backing away. Get out! Misala yelled at him, making toward us. Now listen carefully, everybody, Misala said, pointing and glaring at them like she used to do when pissed off. If I see any one of you picking on her, you are crossing your boundary with me, and I'm sure you don't want to do that because you don't want to see the other side of me. I mean it. I didn't know how intimidating Misala's face must have looked, but it got the students walking away hurriedly to avoid her eyes. Thanks so much. My voice cracked and hurt at the same time. I had always thought those brats were badass, but they love me. Hey babe, we got you. So you didn't hug me. I released myself from her embrace and said, You guys are the best. They will never forget. And you will be, be forever be grateful. Thanks. Tears streamed down my face, but right now, I need to be alone. I don't feel good at all. I mean, why now? Can't I be alone at least? Finish her to high school in peace? I walked away and knew that they were looking at me with pity. They were great friends and I loved them. I smiled ill at the thought and shook my head. I gradually started liking them. I found myself going into the female's restroom and dropping the tissue paper into the waste bin. I sat in the water closet, buried my face in my palms. I cried out painfully. Yes, I did. It relieved the pain, but sometimes, after two days that the incident happened in the hallway, the scenes kept replaying in my head. It was unbearable. I had my head bowed most of the time while working around the school. It was always great to leave the school during those closing hours, but the house wasn't a place I was glad to go to either. Both school and home rent a place I would like to be, but had no choice. It was late at night. Dad, Mr. Johnson was drunk again. My mom was sad, figuring how to make my, my siblings' life better, and Granny was worried. I wanted to help this family in a way I could, but I just... 17 and no one would want to hire anyone under the age of 18 working for him or her. <sighs> Life is full of ups and downs. I walked to my closet and picked out my pajamas, trousers, and a t-shirt. My room was painted yellow and the ceilings white. My room wasn't the flamboyant one, just ordinary, but I knew if things were going well for Mr. Johnson and he was in his old self, he would have made my room attractive. I get out my room since I wasn't feeling sleepy and I went downstairs to the kitchen to drink water and met mom sitting and stirring her tea mindlessly. She had trailed off. I sighed, walked up to her and shook her head, shoulder which brought her to the present state. Mom, seriously? You're thinking again? She smiled and offered me tea. You can have it. I'm fine. I said and I smiled. What were you thinking about? Something. Now tell me, do you still draw? Yeah, drawing was one thing I loved doing. I knew how to draw when I was eight. Even the drawing things was what I started doing back then, but now humans and other stuff. It was something that gave me joy. Yes, mom, I still do. And don't try to change the topic. Tell me what you were thinking about. If you're probably wondering why I must ask you that, it is because I know that this attitude your dad is displaying is affecting you. And I just hope you are still living within you and not dead. I smiled. She didn't have a clue about what I passed through in school. She knew when the bullying started and when it ended. She had always been there, consoling me, and telling me it wasn't going to be forever. She even had to meet up with a proper actress and explain what her mates in school were doing to me. Mr. Johnson had followed me too on many occasions in which the perpetrators had apologized on their behalf and defended some students. But some students 
could be stubborn animals. They continued to bully me, calling me a crybaby. Mommy's pet, Daddy's pet, was frustrating and embarrassing. And now, this whole thing had to start again. I wasn't thinking of me. Tell me more. I didn't know why, but I wanted it that way. I will be fine, I thought. I'm still living within me and not dead. It's not easy though, but I'm trying, I said, and my mom looked into my eyes. Her eyes were brown and her eyelashes were full and long. She was beautiful. She cupped my cheeks and said, I promise to make things right for us all soon. I'll try my best to be there for you. Always come to me if you need me for anything, honey. Please don't hesitate. Tosin, open up to me if anything is bothering you, okay? Your pajamas are worn out and I will try to get one soon, okay? I promise I will try my best, she said. She was done trying. Mom, you're trying your very best already, okay? You're trying. Don't make too many promises and I will always be there for you. I will always be there. Anyway, I'm 17 and you might be thinking of what to say. That won't bother me too much, right? It's okay, Mom. Really. You can confine in me if you need someone to talk to. I could give you my shoulders to lean on or probably cry on or just to rest on. If those students are giving you a hard time in your class, okay? I will always be there, Mom. Mom laughed and hugged me before saying, Thanks for the offer, and thank God my students are jerks. They don't give me hard times at all. It is a blessing. Then, you are enough for a walk. I grinned. My mom took out her camera and captured me grinning. What was that for? I queried surprisingly. Making memories. I love the smile. I collected the camera for her to take a look and it was beautiful as she said. She was good at capturing things. It was something she loved doing. You know, you could make me a career just by capturing people on an occasion. You're right. I will try and tell people about it then. Even this teacher idea was a friend. This happens to me. Vice principal of that school. He told me there was a vacancy when I told him I was looking for a job, so that was how it was easy for me to get accepted into school. I think I will have to tell them. His name is Gideon Bolagate. Okay, Mom, hopefully things work out for the best. I walked away to get water from the tap before drinking. I heard the shattering sound of the camera and knew she was capturing as I was drinking. I turned to spread out my hand with a cup in one hand and grinned for her to capture more. I didn't hesitate to make more poses before kissing her goodnight and departed to our different rooms.